threatening the Israeli brand. Israel says the growing movement to boycott its products and businesses is now a strategic threat and it's gathering momentum. So just how vulnerable is Israel? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to Inside Story in Doha. I'm Adrian Finnegan. It's a call for a campaign of boycotts, divestment and sanctions against Israel, aimed at highlighting Palestinian rights and the occupation. The BDS movement has pressured academics and even pop stars not to visit Israel, and it's influenced the laws of EU states who are now barred from cooperating with Israeli companies that are linked to the occupied territories. But some Israelis say that the BDS movement is just a way of delegitimizing their country and have even called it anti-Semitic. The BDS movement appears to be getting more attention, and the Israeli government is concerned. Almost nine years after it was launched by Palestinian civil society groups and trades unions, the call to boycott is gaining international traction. Like most actors, my real job is saving the world. Last week, Scarlett Johansson ended her partnership with Oxfam after getting caught up in a controversy over her sponsorship deal with SodaStream, an Israeli company operating in the West Bank. The U.S. Secretary of State then warned that boycotts could intensify unless the Israelis and Palestinians make peace. This outraged some Israeli politicians. What uh, Secretary Kerry said in München uh, is totally unacceptable. Israel cannot negotiate and discuss things that are really uh, uh, relevant to our most vital uh, national security uh, interests with uh, such a threat. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu considers the BDS movement a strategic threat and has called an emergency meeting to explore ways to deal with it. Other Israeli politicians are worried that the movement could hurt brand Israel and could lead to increasing international isolation. Israel's finance minister Yair Lapid says the country's economy will be particularly vulnerable to a boycott from its biggest trading partner, the European Union. Even a partial boycott, he said last week, could see Israel's exports drop by 20 percent, a loss of more than five billion dollars and thousands of jobs. Well, I think given the, the, the size of the Israeli economy, uh, five billion dollars is, uh, is not a very uh, 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 large part by itself, but it will have uh, an impact. Um, and the economy is about 274, 275 billion uh, um, dollars per year in terms of GDP. So you know, a, a reasonable kind of 5% impact with a direct knock-on knock impact uh, on jobs for sure. Now, how it actually pans out, how quickly that would happen, how uh, quickly deinvestment would take place is, is another issue. But if this, if this is the beginning of a sea change in a rolling tide where even greater investment is deleveraged, I'm sure not just in terms of the value of the currency, but in terms of the impact on jobs, it certainly will have one would imagine uh, uh, a considerable impact. Denmark's Danske Bank recently stopped doing business with Israeli bank Hapoalim over its links to the West Bank. It's among an increasing number of European institutions, including Dutch and Norwegian firms, that are concerned about their links to Israeli companies that profit from working in the West Bank. Plenty to talk about on today's programme, so let's bring in our guests. We are joined today from Ramallah by Nasser Abdel Karim, financial economist and former advisor to the UN and the World Bank. From Jerusalem, Avram Berg, uh, former chairman of the Knesset and chairman of Molad, a political think tank. And also in Jerusalem, we're joined by uh, Danny Diane, former chairman of the Yesha Council of Jewish Settlements and a political activist. Danny, let's uh, start with you. Um, is Israel right to be concerned, so concerned, about this BDS movement? Well, I wouldn't say that the BDS movement is that what should concern us. I think that we should be concerned by the behavior of some European governments and by the EU itself, uh, led in this case by uh, Baroness Ashton. Uh, those fringe elements that advocate, in fact, the destruction of Israel, the BDS movement, uh, that's not to bother us. But yes, I, am, I, I, I take issue with the behavior of some European governments of the EU that, in, as a matter of fact, that starting to use economic coercion as a means 
to determine the outcome of the negotiations between Israeli and Palestinians, and that is a, a reprehensible thing. Uh, Avram Berg, the, the, the BDS movement does appear to be gaining traction now. Um, do you agree that Israel should be concerned about, it, about its move into the mainstream, even if it's only just beginning to do so? Is, is Israel being unofficially sanctioned here? I'll make a distinction between two kinds of, uh, of policies. The BDS movement, which is a Palestinian expression, and the European or international community. As for the local Palestinian one, um, which are for almost five decades under the Israeli occupation with no real democratic rights, with no civil rights, and no real liberties, and no actually rights for self-determination, I ask myself, as a Palestinian, so to say, what is actually the best, uh, the best action called for? Violence is not kosher. Violence is not legitimate neither in the eyes of the international community, nor should it be uh, uh, legitimate in the eyes of the Palestinians. Uh, political expression is not allowed because Israel wants to con current Israel wants to continue its occupation. So it looks like that the BDS is a legitimate uh, civil uh, civil disobedience and legitimate nonviolence policy, which the Palestinians are right to take. I don't like it personally because I'm a dialogist, but I understand the Palestinian position. As for the international community, it's a different thing entirely. Here, it is not so much about the economic measures as much as telling Israel, listen, the situation in the occupied territories is temporarily for 50 years almost now, since 67. How long do you think can we tolerate amongst us, amongst the, West, the Western civilization and the democratic hemisphere, the only country amongst us which is still colonial and still occupier? not for long, and therefore it's a moral statement saying sanctions are being implemented on elements which are not dialogist. If Israel does not want to con have a conversation and reconciliation and a dialogue with the Palestinians, you cannot find yourself amongst us as a legitimate member, and therefore it's a moral statement more than just an economic one. Danny Diane, I mean, the, the BDS movement doesn't pose an existential threat to Israel, does it? it, it it's more of a challenge to, to Israel's oppression of the Palestinian people. Of course not. Uh, Israel has four major trade partners, North America, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, and the Far East. And right now, uh, some elements in one of them in Western Europe are uh, threatening with uh, economic sanctions. But uh, we have to make it very clear. It's not a boycott. As a matter of fact, it's an, it's an attempt to ex of extortion against Israel. Why? Because a boycott is uh, when you take uh, economic measures based on uh, moral standards. But this time, it's not based on moral standards. It's based on political interests. And I, I want to prove that. Uh, if uh, we, if it were uh, 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 for moral reasons, then I would expect the uh, Europeans also to threat with boycotts and sanctions uh, the Palestinian Authority that uh, just a few days ago, a few weeks ago, uh, its chairman, its president, gave a hero's welcome to convicted murderers that uh, were released from Israeli prison at their demand. Uh, so you, we see that uh, f they have no problem with terrorists, but suddenly they have problems with construction of houses. When in the same day, Prime Minister Netanyahu announces the construction of new houses for families. and. Chairman Abbas, President Abbas, uh, uh, kisses and hugs a convicted terrorist. And the European Union, the European government only condemned one and the wrong one, Prime Minister Netanyahu, then it's very clear that we are talking about okay. very cynical political interests here, nothing to do with moral okay. values. Okay, I'll bring in Nasser Abdul Karim in, in just a moment, but I, I think that, 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 uh, uh, that uh, uh, Avram Berg wants to, to respond to that. Let's look, D Danny Dayan is the most eloquent speaker for the settler settlements movement. Now, nobody is better, artic more articulated than him. But then the question is not can Danny Dayan bedmouth and, uh, and paint in black colors all the Palestinians' movements and, uh, uh, and policies. The question is very simple. What an arch settler like Mr. Dayan has in mind to do for a future couple of millions Palestinians that do not have any political rights under the occupation of Israel? Can he continue to claim that Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East? 
as far as it comes to Jews, and what does that mean for the non-Jews, especially to the occupied Palestinians? Give me an alternative program for the Palestinian people, and don't tell me how bad they are. But tell me how good you are. Tell me what is your policy. Tell me what is your solution. All right, let, 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 let's let Mr. Dayan respond very briefly, if you, if you would, please, because I, I want to bring in uh, uh, Mr. Abdul Karim. Well, I was. I will say very briefly. Uh, uh, first of all, thank uh, for, for for the praise of Mr. Bug. But uh, I, I seem. It seems that Mr. Bug was busy moving to the fringes of the Israeli society and the political scene, and didn't notice that just a few years ago, our Prime Minister Ehud Olmert gave the most uh, far-reaching peace offer to the to President Mahmoud Abbas, and President Abbas rejected it. In fact. Abdul, uh, Nasser Abdul Karim uh, in, in uh, Ramallah, um, is a boycott of goods uh, at, at Israel uh, the most effective and moral way to influence Israeli policy, do you think? I think uh, no matter will uh, argue uh, or dispute the fact that boycotting uh, uh, products from settlements will hurt definitely and significantly the uh, uh, economy of Israel as well as the viability of settlements activities. So uh, we as Palestinians, what we care for is not to hurt the, the Israeli people. We care uh, to make the cost of living in the occupied Palestinian territories so high for Israeli settlers and to let them feel that this is not a heaven. They have to pay the price, so they will think it wise to come uh, and settle in this area. So we need to end occupation. And uh, as a matter of fact, in the, even the boycott in, in the Palestinian territories, we uh, uh, not many people support the boycott of Israeli products uh, manufactured in Tel Aviv or in Yaffa or Akka. As a matter of fact, we import more than $3.5 billion from Israel in, in goods and, uh, and, and services. But we are pro boycotting Israeli products uh, okay. uh, that produce, uh, manufactured in, in the settlements. Okay. So this is the position of right. the Palestinians. Okay, let's, let's just put uh, this into, into context for a moment. The West Bank is, is split into different zones depending on the, how much control is Israel exercises. Area C is under total Israeli control. According to a government report, there are 600 Israeli-owned factories in the West Bank. Each year, they generate $250 million worth of exports. Now, that only accounts for North 0.55% of the national total, but severe restrictions placed upon the Palestinians in the West Bank is estimated to cost their economy more than $3 billion. The fact remains, much of Area C is considered illegally occupied by uh, much of the international community. Um, uh, Nasa Ab Abdul Karim, um, under international law, as we were saying, Israeli settlements uh, on occupied land are illegal. Does that mean the products produced for export in factories on that land are also illegal. What, what are the implications of that? I think, yes, the EU uh, decision to boycott the products of settlements is very clear. It's based on international law, on international uh, resolutions and conventions. Settlement activities are all illegal in principle. So whatever they produce, whatever they generate, uh, it, uh, whatever they do, it's illegal. So it, uh, settlements must end. And uh, uh, this is Palestinian land. As you said, the World Bank report, not a Palestinian report, estimated that uh, 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 for Palestinians not being able to use Area C, that cost us around $3.4 billion a year. You have, from 1994, then you have to count 18 or 20 years. So we are talking about a loss of more than $100 right. billion from, the, uh, from that, that prevention. So what we are after is not just, it's not, getting into struggle again with Israelis. We are after uh, uh, reaching a peaceful but just and lasting solution with Israel and live side by side in two-state solution. Uh, That's the negotiation all after. D Danny, Diane, the, the BDS campaign calls for full equality in law for Palestinian Israeli citizens. Now, without wishing to hijack our, our discussion and take it into a whole new area here, is it possible for you to explain, in, in, in your view, succinctly why that's a problem? 
No, it's not a problem because it exists, so it, it isn't a problem. That uh, proves that the, the whole BDS uh, movement uses excuse in order to delegitimize Israel because uh, that very goal exists. I, I, I looked very carefully at the American Studies Association uh, decision and the FAQ page, the frequently asked questions to explain it, that I noticed that they do not even uh, 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 no, name one time, once, the, the Ariel University and their complaints that they gave the, the against Tel Aviv University, Haifa University, the University in Jerusalem, etc., namely against the existence of the State of Israel. But let's put aside, uh, returning to economics uh, uh, for a second, the assessments. You know, assessments, uh, speculations about numbers, everyone can give an assessment. The fact is that this day, this very moment as we talk now uh, from Jerusalem and Ramallah, 25,000 uh, Palestinians thrive and, and uh, are employed with uh, higher salaries than in the Palestinian Authority in Israeli films in Judea and Samaria, uh, uh, bringing a, a, a contribution of 300 million euros to the PA, to the Palestinian Authority GDP. 300 million euros to the Palestinian Authority GDP. This is the fact. The, in, as a matter of fact, the industrial parks in Mishora Dumim and in Barkan and other places in which which, as I say again, okay. 25,000 Palestinians uh, uh, find okay. the, their, their uh, 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 work are the places of the best existing coexistence in the world between Jews and Palestinians. If you want to ruin that, then you are hindering okay. peace, not contributing right. to I, it in no way. I, I'm from Berg. We'll come back to you in just a moment. But, but, but first, I, I know that, uh, that Nasser Abdul Karim wants to, to respond to that. I, I wouldn't argue with the gentleman from Tel Aviv about the uh, economic ties between some Palestinians, especially low-skilled laborers and uh, settlements. We have 35,000 persons working in settlements, and we do have some trade with those settlements. That's because it, uh, it's a de facto, not because the Palestinians desire to do so. And after all, from the cost-benefit analysis and perspective, from the Palestinians' perspective, the economic cost uh, to Palestinians, whenever the settlements end and dissolute, is, is, is lower than any political benefit that we are looking for. We are after ending occupation, and we are, don't think that we will uh, trade off uh, uh, settlements, activities, and occupation with economic prosperity. This is the economic piece of Netanyahu, and I don't think any Palestinian would accept that. We would accept, uh, live as neighbors with Israel. We will continue economic relations once we have a state and on equal footing. And then I don't think that any Palestinian would uh, uh, probably disagree with continuing economic cooperation with any country in the world, including Israel. But we need okay. to be okay. free first to decide on our options and policies. All right. The BDS doesn't just promote uh, an economic boycott. Its activists describe their approach as a, a non-violent means of resistance. Its three-pronged approach includes the boycott of products and companies they say profit from the violation of Palestinian rights, but it also lobbies against cultural and academic institutions they say contribute to or defend the oppression of Palestinians. Last year, renowned physicist Stephen Hawking joined the academic boycott and major entertainers like Elvis Costello and Bono have cancelled plans to perform in Israel. But more than that, BDS wants to create a critical image of Israel, an idea inspired by the anti-apartheid movements in the 80s in South Africa. Uh, Avram Berg, I think we've, we've tried to establish here that, that perhaps the economic effects of the BDS campaign here uh, are at the moment, for the least, minimal. Uh, so Israel perhaps is more concerned about the negative impact that, that the movement is, is having on public opinion worldwide. Is it hurting brand Israel? You know, you ask me practical questions, and we speak here about numbers, and I don't think the issue is neither about numbers nor about uh, measures of damage, etc. It's about principles. Um, if the conversation is the old talk of interests, what is the interest of Israel to have larger land? Let's never mind what is the international prize. Let's give my, let's give some better salaries for 25,000 people, as Mr. Dayan is saying, and occupy the rest of the land. So in this conversation, I'm not really interested. But I believe that the international and the local discourse moved from the conversation of interest to the conversation of values. Do I, as an Israeli, want to live in a country 
which has a one-state regime between the Jordan and the Mediterranean, in which half of the population, the Jews, ethnically speaking, are enjoying, like myself and my children and my family, a full comprehensive democratic reality. And the other part of the population are having no democracy at all, no rights at all, none whatsoever constitutional uh, uh, shields and safety nets. This is a bad moral situation for any country. And therefore, for me, the principle is not necessarily how to measure the damage or how to measure the benefit, but how to do the right thing. And the right thing is, A, that between the Jordan and the Mediterranean, every individual will have the rights to have the same rights, and every collective will have the rights for the same self-definition and determination. If the Israelis or the, Jewish, Jew, the Jews among the Israeli society would like to define themselves in this kind of a collective definition called the State of Israel, let the Palestinians define themselves in a collective definition which is called the State of Palestine, an independent, sovereign, equal, leveled with the one of Israel. Then let them decide for themselves how to work, how to employ, yeah. how to pay taxes, how to defend themselves. Not Dani Dayan, A, to negate their right to have a state, and then to decide how much you pay them for that. Dani Dayan, uh, Israel then perhaps should, should be worrying less about uh, its, its image abroad, the PR battle, uh, and, and should look to, to try to fix what, what we've just heard described there as a bad moral situation. Well, as a matter of fact, Israel is incessantly trying uh, uh, to achieve peace with the Palestinians, but un unfortunately that's unsuccessful because of the Palestinian intransigence. The so-called settlements, the Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria, are not and never were an impediment for peace. On the other hand, on the contrary, they are a, a boost for coexistence. But uh, 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 as we see, for instance, the Palestinian Authority, the PLO, refusing adamantly to resettle the refugees, the so-called refugees, the fifth generation of the original refugees in the places in which they reside in order to uh, use them as a bargaining chip, in order to uh, coerce Israel to strip itself from its character as a Jewish uh, uh, state. It's adamant refusal to recognize Israel as a yeah. Jewish state, not as a matter of fact, not just to recognize Israel as a Jewish state, as a matter of fact, to recognize the very existence of okay. the Jewish nation, Jewish, the, to, to consider Jews right. just the religion. But so the self-flagellation that uh, uh, Mr. Borg now engaged in, I cannot accept it. The reason that a yeah. Palestinian state does not exist is only one, the Palestinian intransigence. Okay, I'm, I'm afraid, uh, uh, Avram Berg, I, I, I don't think you're going to get uh, the time to, to reply because I've, I've got to throw it one more time back to uh, uh, Nasser Abdul Karim in, in Ramallah before we, we end the program. I just want to ask you, uh, uh, Mr. Abdul Karim, uh, whether you think perhaps a, a boycott of good Goods from Israel and the occupied territories um, could actually uh, backfire. It, it, is it is it the, the the best way you think to protest? Could it have a negative impact? Could Palestinians suffer as a result of it? They might lose their jobs uh, if the currency takes a downturn. If the general Israeli economy is affected. If I understand you correctly, I think that Israel should think not just of the economic impact. I think Israel uh, should also look into uh, the long-term uh, 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 probably prospects uh, if Israel enters into a, a lasting peace agreements with Palestinians, then that will give the Israelis uh, a very good chance to uh, integrate in the uh, uh, Mediterranean economies and even Arab and Muslim economies. And after all, the Palestinians are not against Jews. The Palestinians are against occupying power of Israel. So we, uh, we respect Jew, uh, Jews uh, 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 in their religion, and we, we have uh, uh, learned to exist with them, coexist with them, even before the existence of the Israel, Israeli okay. state in 1948. And I think just one last uh, uh, statement, uh, Israeli taxpayers in Tel Aviv and in, in, in inside yeah. Israel itself should think that they are uh, uh, financing and leveraging the settlement activities with no actual uh, benefits on the long okay. run to the Israeli state at all. It will all harm right. them. Uh, gentlemen, I'm afraid we are, we are out of time. Uh, as always, the news waits for for, for no man. That's next here on Al Jazeera. Thank you to, to all of you, uh, Nasser Abdul Karim, Avram Berg, and uh, Danny Dayan.
And thank you very much indeed for being with us uh, for this edition of Inside Story. If you want to send us uh, any thoughts or, or comments, please do email us. Inside Story at aljazeera.net is our address. In Doha, I'm Adrian Finnegan. Thanks for being with us. I'll see you again. Bye for now.